Behind me is the White House, one of the hubs from the salt industry. In the 1500s, it was due to the salt that the Turks and Caicos Islands came onto the maps of the world. Today, journey with me, your host Yasmin Rigby Blues, as we take a look at the salt industry in Salt Key. The island that time forgot is the slogan of this flat triangular landmass measuring about two miles per side. It sits in the southern part of the Turks and Caicos Islands, seven miles southeast of Grand Turk, first gaining attention on maps back in 1500. It is felt that early explorers may have stopped off on this island to collect salt to preserve meat for homeward journeys. It's no wonder that the island is called Salt Key. History records that in 1512, Ponce de Leon made reference to these islands, and 73 years later, in 1585, record was made of salt exploitations during the English Renoir voyages led by Granville and White. The Portuguese pilot, Samoa Fernandes, led the fleet to the island Caicos in search of salt, failing to find any on both occasions. On the first voyage, Fernandez searched for salt ponds, and on the second, for two salt ponds. Question is, where were they looking? It could only be surmised that they went to other islands in the archipelago. It wasn't until the Bermudians began to settle the islands in 1678 that we hear anything more about these islands. While there are three salt islands, Grand Turk, South Caicos and Salt Key, we're focusing in this documentary on Salt Key and the salt industry, a business that made Turks and Caicos Islands stand out in history. History recalls that the geography made the low-lying islands ideal for salt production. However, the islands are prone to extreme weathers, which affected the salt industry and lives of the population. The islands underwent periods of drought, good for salt industry but bad for the laborers, or hurricanes, which destroyed the Salinas, stores and the homes of the workers. Heavy rains would also reduce the salt production levels. The fresh water would fill up the pans, greatly reducing the salinity of the waters in the ponds, and any salt collected could be washed away. A day's rain in the raking season could reduce the crop by a quarter. This meant that once the salt had been collected, it was sold as quickly as possible. Sometimes, ships arrived to buy salt, but there was none to be sold, especially in periods of bad weather. So in the 1850s, the salt merchants constructed salt houses where salt could be stored to guarantee all year round supply. In Salt Key, there are still some who remember working in the salt ponds and we asked them about their experiences. George Simmons said his grandfather once owned a portion of the pond which he inherited and then had to work. We used to call it Low Pond. You know, that's the name of it. And you used to work in it? Well, I tell you now, I was the owner, part the owner, and I had to work in it. A big question for us was, how was salt made? Well, it appears we start with the cleaning of the ponds. Well, they, 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 they used to have so many men to walk and, and uh, they say like about eight, eight men. They have never seen the soil walk there. That's the beginning of the soil, cleaning the ponds. Cleaning the ponds to make the soil. The first thing you have to do, clean the ponds first before you make soil, you see? And how, that's... How do you clean the ponds? They, they clean the ponds with a rake. The ponds then, they have a lot of mud in it from the time they've been raking soil <laughs> for the soil season. They have a lot of mud in it, you know? 
And uh, then they can start to store out. They got to go and clean all of that mud out of the pond before they could make the soil. And we rake, they have to have rakes. That special means rakes made special to rake the mud that. And that got to go on at least about five, five, six weeks, six, six to, six to 12 weeks, so six to 12 weeks, plus cleaning, cleaning up before you can rig the soil. They have two crowds. The crowd south will have six weeks, and the crowd north will have six weeks. And he, he walked that, he walked that soil like say, you got six weeks to clean the pond. Not only the pond, you got to clean the, the canals and all, you know, where the water got to run through. But now they give you, they give you that, say, six weeks. See, if you do it in five weeks, you do it in five weeks, you have a week space coming to you. And they walk that, every year they walk it that day. Then they walk to clean those forms. And so they walk in six weeks between those forms in five weeks. They give us a week space extra. Now we had the soil pans, and then down by the, by the dock, we had a canal to the water, they run the water from the sea through the canal into the soil ponds. You go to the main pond, the big, big, big the main pond first, then I run over by the main mills, run into the ponds. Then we remain there in the ponds, as you want the water, remain in the ponds for so while, for a length of time. And then I think 28 days or something like that, it'll make up into to, um, to soil, but gotta go through some process first before it get to the soil, like keep running the water off and put more clean water on the ponds and different things like that. And, but they have a man there who look after that daily, you know. Well, those, those part of those trenches, they use the trenches to part one pan from the other pan. And then you have, in those, pen, those trenches, you have a, a little door cut that the water can run from one pan to the other. Sometimes when you got light wind, you want to dry a pond, you have a, a, a box, a box you use to dry the pond with, turn the box to dry the pond with. It's a wooden box made with fans on it. You put down the pond and they put it through the, through the door and you keep turning it. It's not do with the hand. You turn the water off the pond to dry the pond to rake the soil. Well, you do that when you have light wind. And the machine, one of those machines can breeze can't turn the machine. So you use the the um, box, the water box to, to dry the pond. By yourself? When, huh? By yourself? By yourself, yes. But when the breeze blowing hot day is, the, the machine, when the windmill could dry the pond to drink the soil. From the soil water in the pond, we call it, right? Yeah. And you use this gauge. You see when it get up to the temperature, then you turn it on, the, you call it the making pan, right? Yeah. And then it get up to the breeze blowing in the hot sun, it form a scum on the top. Then it drops, you know, keep dropping. And that goes to the bottom of the pond and make form the soil. That's the closest I can give you on that. Pickle the soil come out. It go back in the soil pan, it have to be pickle underneath. See, where the, where the soil is made out of. Yeah, strong pickle. See, like, like this here now, that's no more, that's full of mud. They have to, if they want to rig soil out of that, they would have to clean that out first mm -hmm. and pull it out, but make sure that trenches is good. That's not that the water will leak from one pond to another. 
So they had to clean that and take all the mud out at the bottom of the property. Yeah. And they fill it up again with pickle, pickle. Not the fresh uh, salt water, just pickle. They have to be stronger than the pickle, it's much stronger than the salt water. They put full the parts out of it, water, the salt water, and leave it for a few days or so, the sun will make the pickle itself. They draw the, the sun will draw these, the uh, salt, the freshness out of it and make pickle. Salt is made from salt water, from sea water outside. As you see the canal now, and it come in and the salt sea come in and they cut it off. And the salt may come that vapor every 20 months. Every 21 days, yeah, we have salt. Now the next step was to watch and aid the natural elements making the salt. They had some had, um, merry-go-round also, down, 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 down to pitch this hole. It's a merry-go-round, you know, like it's a round thing with the sails going around, going around, going around with the breeze, the breeze carried it around, called the merry-go-round, yeah. Okay. And what did, what did they had one, do? one down, one down south, down Pigeon's Hole. Mm -hmm. They had one, I think one up here. I think they had two up here, and one down Pigeon's Hole, three of those merry-go-rounds. But man, it's a boy then. And they so when you want to dry the pond, they go around and, and, and dry the pond to rake, to rake the soil. A ton of water to the ponds or something like that. When it's pretty, pretty to see them going around, see them right going around, you know, for them, you know, going around, they'd run and run and run, and they had to go around, they still like the wind, come right around, breeze came right around, go around the wind, you know, they had to go around, they turn the water wheel to get the water on the ponds. And that took the water from the ponds? I, I, don't, I don't know if you want to take it from the ponds, or you want to put the water on the ponds, they do the same thing. Okay. And they only do that when the wind is blowing, it's a little breeze. But when you got no breeze, you can't use them because everything is calm. Then you use your water wheel to dry the pond or put water on the pond. Got two men, two men turning it in, water on the pond. Mm -hmm. So you'd see a lot of people out there. Yeah, you see sometimes you got about 10 or 12 people out there in the pond raking the soil. Mm -hmm. Breaking up, some breaking up, and some got a long thing like a rake, raking it in heaps. They told the car to come over and straighten the car. Mule in the cart, trading the mule in the cart, and carry on the, on the deposit and dump it there. Sometimes they have machines, so it's, well, you turn it with your hand. These machines are made from about a wood, yeah, and they has about 10, but 10, you know, you could grip it with your hands. You turn the water from one. Sometimes one pond and put next to call was a reservoir, a reservoir. They be a strong pickle itself to turn onto the other ponds to make the salt. Yeah. At least sometimes they run along a big, a big. I mean, if it ain't the rain, if it ain't the rain coming in regularly, like they run that long at least for about eight weeks. With the ponds making the soil. And now again, after the ponds making the soil, say like um, four weeks or two weeks, the, the water will get high. The test will get over the, the, the test. See? And now, what you have to do then, you gotta take so much of that water from the pond, the strong water from the pond and add in lower water because after they get too high, the soil won't make good, you see. It makes soft soil. So you gotta take that water off of the pond and put new water there so it could continue on making. How do you take the water out? Yeah, the windmills, they would, they would, uh, Start the windmills, you know, and those windmills, they, they connected with the ponds. Well, I mean, they, they got doors, doors to some of the ponds, you know, raise up and put on, you know. And when you raise it to, when you raise it to take the water off, you start the machine and you, you hold the door up, and you hold the door up, the, the machine can turn 
the world from the pond. After you get so much water from the pond, maybe like about half, then you put the doors down. Now, your reservoirs, you see all that water got to be kept different. Now, now after, after you're going to bring it down low, now you're going to open the pond up and the machines can come higher water in. What we done already make up. They ain't gotta be only 80 or 90. And they put that money. And now they made me make up for a week. And I had at least eight weeks. But good but good weather making so well. Eight weeks you could go drive that pond, drive that pond and take so out of it. Mm -hmm. Now the, the soil, the soil making, just like how you see this rather, rather like this now, and, and like and, and tonight, you got the rather like this. The, the, the more the wind blow, the more the wind blow, the faster the soil make. Yeah, so now you got good breeze going, the soil make more quicker. You know, the water got to be up to its set. So long the water over 100 or we set, the, the harder the wind blow, the, the more soil made in the pond. Because it, it go by the, the water looking, looking like that with the, the wind doing it, licking the water. The more it can lick the water, the soil can drop from the from the water in the pond. They, they make, the pond make more soil in the night than what they make in the day. Mr. Harris had each boat had their names and things marked here. So they, this boat had their name. They, they get regans to their name. Next one got a regans to their names. And then they got all their soil bags piled up and bundled still. So you know what, what boats this is? And we say that's the junior. The Achilles, the New Era, Palestina, Palestina, and the I have a bird named the Hope too. Well, all those fine birds he had there. And, and Morgan had the 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 Nehi and the Unique. Those two birds he had. But so Fred Morgan had the the J, um, the, the, the the Dove. And then JB had the Winifred B. All those birds are used to side. The, the soil. soil. We used to have the granulated soil, that's the grind soil. We had a mill, a mill down here, down by down the place, down by Harris Place there. We used to grind the soil as fine as you wanted. To grind to table soil. Heavy, heavy mud mill. Very fine. Sometimes they had an easy crushes up to get a little more coarser. They put that in crocus sacks, the um, big crocus sacks and several.